not about beating up on where we are. How do we facilitate sustainability? And you don't stop facilitating sustainability because you have a colleague come to you and say, look, I want to work with my whole class. If you see that as the end, right? We don't know if they're, they've got a class of 30 and 15 are struggling. That's an easy cognitive dissonance to, to deal with, right? When you, got, when you do a lesson and half your class doesn't learn, you go, well, it must be me. That might be part of that question. Tell me more about why, why you feel your instruction is not making a difference. Mm -hmm. They look like it'd be the golden one to get. And why are you saying, you know, I'll just take that. I'll take more cases like that where our colleagues and look, help me with my whole class instruction. It doesn't mean that person has made explicit or had opportunity to be reflective about their beliefs. This is so interesting to me. Like for them to even reflect on that that would be an option to put down on that request for assistance form. Proxy had a really good like idea, like giving giving them an option to check that box, like that instruction. It's so interesting to me to get them to just initially start thinking about that instead of putting a, a child's name down. She even she said, it, like for behavior cases, you you might get that kind of reflection more for a behavior case, but not necessarily for a, a mismatch in instruction towards math or reading. It's just very interesting to me to get them to, to think like that. Krista, you said something earlier about class cases you've seen, uh -huh. which fit kind of what Beth was saying. We get a lot of class cases if they're following directions, on task, transition, organization, but I don't even know off the top of my head if I can count maybe one or two that are academic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's well, and I would, I would say too that teachers are more willing to accept the responsibility for not having the skills to deal with a class behavior issue than they are in academic mm -hmm. I think the expectation for them to know what to do <laughs> academically is higher. So when they get to behavior, they go, oh, I don't know how to do this. So I'm willing to admit I don't know how. Come help me. And where does behavior reside? With who? The Behavior, when we go through the behavior train, we always talk about that's that's kind of that tough because there's emotion, here, but it, it's oftentimes very much an external look at the control. So help me with this group of kids that are all broken, <laughs> right? Because behavior is much more external. No, I would even say though, teachers, I would, I would say that maybe we don't give them enough credit in those situations because I mean, I'll have teachers come to me and say, I know that these kids maybe need some social skill development, but I don't know what to do to facilitate that. So operative, that operative words there. These kids, kids need that. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, but what about the I don't know what to do to provide that? I mean, Wonderful. isn't that about creating the match? Absolutely. Okay. For Everybody. those kids. 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 Behavior, behavior is a really, you see it because behavior evokes emotion, it evokes fear, because when you got a class out of control, you become, and you can't hide it, right? When the kids are rolling into the hallway or falling out the windows, it's like, oh man, everybody knows anyway. It's much more external than the group of kids or the kids who are sitting there with their head down and not performing on the, the, the language arts test or whatever. So it's... It, I just, I, I think this is a great discussion for us just to recognize there's an intentionality now in our mind. Mm -hmm. Our intention is not about how do we do a case. Our intention is not how do we train team and how to do a case. That piece of it, you, you can do and you do well. The intentionality, and I'm going to tell you something, I don't have the easy answer. I don't, if you think you're going to leave here at the end of the day and talk and say do this, that's, you've already kind of identified points where you can elevate your own thinking about how do I sustain this work? And for most of us, and I could be wrong, sustaining this isn't about solely about doing more cases. 
it's about how do we help our colleagues in the classroom deepen their professional understanding and skills of how what they do instructionally creates conditions for more productive learning. That's what all of this is about, isn't it? I mean, the district's not doing this. They're saying, how do we help create more reflection for our professionals about how their work in that classroom either produces the right conditions for learning or not? Sure. Um, so our request for collaboration, we changed a while ago, and then I changed it even more after September 1. So it's a Google Doc, but it says the teacher name, date of request. I need to collaborate on, and then it's check boxes. And so it's grass school, classroom management, motivation, behavior, accommodating, changing tasks or instruction or assessments, formative assessment, at the bottom, <coughs> reading instruction, math instruction, writing instruction. So it's all focused on teach, like you know when you're requesting, you're requesting mostly about you, not the student. It doesn't say anywhere. Well, it does say the next question is I'd like to focus on one student, small group, my whole class are unsure. <laughs> And then I'm when sure. you unsure, right? Like, like I think a student, but but maybe I can. Can I check more, more than one? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Right, but it gives them, and then it, you know, it asks, what are you interested in?" Have to have some folks on the concern right away. Like they really have to focus in on what their concern is. Yeah, um, like I narrow it down. Right, I make them think before they even submit this paper of like my kids doing yeah. this and this and this. Right, so it's it has been effective in. I. I'm, I'm okay. Listen, Vanessa, I will try anything um, once, but for me, just just for me, the open-endedness to the request is your assessment. Yeah. Because yeah. really, from the teacher's perspective, they're they're all they need to do is to get to the team. I mean, literally, you could just give everybody a red ticket in your school and say, if you put what your name, if you put the red ticket in the box, we'll be there to meet you. We don't need to hear what your concerns are. We're there. Because then we'll have the conversation. I mean, you, you realize the request for assistance is just a connecting point. But I've always found it fascinating to leave it open, in a sense, because yeah. that's the entry point. That's where your colleagues coming. They're not being deceptive. They're saying, this is what I need help. They're, they're in essence, saying to you, this is how I'm framing my problem, walking in the room. Through the conversation, the problem solving, problem solving, we help reframe and frame the problem together. And oftentimes, one, one piece of research we did on this was more than once what teachers ask for assistance for, even if it's student driven, changes by the time they get through problem identification. So they'll say, I need help with, with um, Melissa, she has trouble in fluency. And when we actually looked at what the strategies and instruction around, they were around response. So that said to us, what our colleague comes in with oftentimes is often broader mm -hmm. and much more, but it also is insight, isn't it? It's insight to how they <coughs> are framing the concern they're bringing. So my position isn't that we shouldn't try to help but we also don't want to lose our entry understanding. Because if they start checking, I need help with my instruction, but that's not their entry point, because that was the box they checked, then you as a case manager might find it more difficult to really yeah. create a better understanding. We purposely had conversations to build. And so, but but here's the thing I can say from that is, you know it's an issue. You see it. As a facilitator, you're saying we're struggling with how do we help get reflection moving, mm -hmm. and I can't discount that at all. I'm not. Yeah, no, it was. Yeah, it was in. I can't a, discount an attempt to switch gears from broken child to broken match, but right. yeah. If you get most professional teachers, give most professionals enough time and enough safety and enough reflective support, they frame problems in ways much differently than when they walk in the room after trying to solve a problem by themselves 
without time and 30 kids running around the room. That's just a reality. When you're in a room with 30 kids, your way of looking at problems is cognitively is very short. You're just kind of putting little pieces together. And just by offering colleagues opportunity to sit and be reflective and start bringing in all of the data that they have in their head that they just haven't made the, had the opportunity to pull together, they change their perception of what the problem is themselves, not what you tell them. You see that happening in your cases, right? So I don't think it's going to be much different when we start talking about this concept of looking at the match as a fundamental belief that learning is really driven by the match. I think when we give professionals um, adequate time and adequate skill and adequate reflection, they move in that direction just as we move in that direction if it fits. But what we really struggle with, I think, in schools is even us, even in our cases, is we move through quickly now. We're our own demon. We know the problem solving process. We know the IA snapshots. We know it all. So now we're doing it, and we kind of forget that that's <coughs> the point of reflection. And we feel the pressure of the time. So we kind of see things in that IA now very quickly, because we've done it so many times. Whereas our colleagues see it happen, but they really don't know what happened. They just saw something. So it gives us a chance to think about intention. What is the instructional assessment for? What is it really for? Who's it for? I was just going to comment on their request for assistance. It seems to me that I like what you're saying about the open-endedness, and it gives you an opportunity to have somebody come freely to the team without having all those expectations. To me, some of that that's on there would be helpful in terms of that initial contact that you have with teachers, and then maybe have them have an opportunity to look at some of those things that are there, because they may not even think at that time. I know we say it's about instruction or the task and not so much about the student, but what they really, that reflection that they might have by even checking those boxes during that meeting, you're able to be reflective with them and say, oh, I noticed you checked the box on instruction. What do you mean by that? And be able to have them give you some feedback into what they're thinking. Or if they don't check that box and say, I noticed you didn't check the box on instruction. Why do you think that is? So to me, it seems like that could be a useful tool to remind us as case managers to have the conversation. What if, what if, I'm just, I'm, I'm being facetious, but yeah. not, what if there were only two boxes? I need help with me or them. <laughs> would that tell you a lot? I think that would be kind of funny. Yeah, that would probably be like the biggest, like, like I need help, I need help or they need help. Which one is it going to be? Check one or only above. <laughs> I think what's really good in this conversation is the recognition that we're struggling with elevating these conversations. We do the steps, we do the steps well. And for some people, they naturally kind of shift during the process, mm -hmm. right? And so what we have to get more conscious of is those points of the conversation. We're going to take a eight-minute stretch. Okay. Um, restroom, some of you are taking advantage of it. Yep. There's snacks. So eight minutes. Go. Go. Oh, that's exciting. I think going this morning.